Hi, it's Wynne, and welcome to another educational video by The Entropy System. So the topic that I am going to be covering today is not something that's necessarily exclusive to DID, but DID is the lens through which I experience it, so that's the way I'm going to talk about it. The subject of today's video is something that I call the self-doubt spiral. Now I'm not talking about like the normal self-doubt that every single human ever will experience at some point in their life. Um, the self-doubt spiral circles around one very specific theme, which is Oh my God, am I faking? I'm only a year and a half into my diagnosis, but the self-doubt spiral does not seem to be going away anytime soon. It's not there all the time. Uh, maybe I'll have a new memory come up and I'll feel fairly disconnected from it. Or maybe someone else will switch out front and I'm very, very co-conscious. So I'm, I'm very close to the front with them. And so my feelings and their feelings get mixed up a little bit or maybe nothing out of the ordinary happens at all and my brain just decides to go, screw you, win. Regardless, the self-doubt spiral finds its way in. This is why being accused of faking DID can hurt so badly because I already worry that I am sometimes. I mean, DID is weird. It's bizarre. I don't see my experiences reflected in almost anything out in the rest of the world. I'll find myself seeing this and thinking, wow, this is so freaky. This doesn't fit the standard idea of reality. It's so out there. It's, is it too out there? Could this possibly be real? Is this all just an act or a fabrication that I've come up with and managed to make even myself believe? Worrying that all of this is some kind of fake act uh, keeps the spiral going all by itself. But something that makes it even worse is when thoughts about my trauma come forward. Um, and it's always one of two thoughts, and sometimes both conflicting thoughts at the same time, which is, that is so freaky, that could not have possibly happened, and this cannot possibly have been bad enough to cause DID. Some of the memories, the, the worst of the memories, I've seen them through the eyes of my altars, but I don't feel connected. I can't place it, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like this, this memory is hovering somewhere in my timeline with nothing on either side of it. Like, I could say, oh, this happened at this year, but I don't know how I got into that place or how that fits in the rest of the year puzzle or anything like that. Like, I know it goes there, but I still feel so disconnected. Like, it's, it's a foreign something that got shoved into my story by some bad writer or an afterthought by an editor, I don't know. And then there's the thought, that this can't possibly be bad enough to cause DID. I mean, my brothers lived through just about everything I did, and neither of them have this disorder. So what the heck? In fact, I feel I've had friends who have talked about their trauma with me, and a lot of what they experienced seems a lot worse than what I experienced, and they don't have DID. So how did I get this? Am I just extra breakable? Am I just faking? Is, I don't know, like it, it's simultaneously too bad and not bad enough and too normal to not be real, but also too bizarre to be real. And it's just this cluster of doubt from every angle. And then of course, if that wasn't bad enough, uh, the phrase that keeps coming back to me is that I just have an active imagination. I was told this a lot as a kid, and a lot of people were told this about me. Like, oh, don't mind when she just has an active imagination. Oh, don't listen to her. She's just getting carried away with her thoughts. What are you talking about? Don't let your imagination get carried away. That's not how that happened. I actually didn't put together the pieces that this was a repeated mantra that I had heard early in my life until a couple sessions with my therapist where I kept bringing that phrase up 
uh, in session, dismissing any struggle I was having by my active imagination. Don't mind me, let's just change the subject. But now that I've put that together, it definitely makes sense. So at first, the self-doubt spiral was really hard to combat, and it still kind of is, but I'm able to recognize that it's more just a lie from my childhood and not something that I actually deserve to be doubting. And so I'll kind of exist in this paradox where I'm sitting here thinking, oh my god, I'm faking. I've been faking it this whole time. There's no way this is real. Okay, someone please front for me. I can't function today. And... I don't know, it's kind of funny to think about it, but it's not funny in the moment. <laughs> Obviously, at the end of the day, I know this is real. There's too much that couldn't possibly be explained by an active imagination. There's so much that is out of my control and that just doesn't make sense outside the context of DID. Not to mention, why would I fake having this? Why would anybody fake having this in their real life? It's exhausting and super not fun. <laughs> I'm also very, very lucky that I have an external support system that helps me when the self-doubt spiral gets too big for me to handle on my own, and they can remind me that I am valuable and that my experiences are real and that I'm not just this wild, lying imagination bomb, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully someday I can tear down those toxic thoughts for good, uh, but until then, I'll just keep finding ways to cope. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you've ever had this sort of self-doubt about DID or a different mental illness, share below. Tell me how you deal with those thoughts of, am I faking? Uh, one last bit of exciting news before I sign off. Uh, we have a logo! The contest is over and we have a winner, and you will see the winning logo on the closing title screen of this video. I hope you all love it, and I'll see you next week, all you entropical fish out there. Bye!